Right, hello everybody. Um, this guide should hopefully help you install the new um, expansion AI, which used to be the um, EAI mod. Um, some hints of that in, in later on in, in the files, and I'll show you that. So to start with, a few um, places that will be helpful to you, especially if there's regular, well, there is regular updates to this mod, which is great because it means they're ever improving. Um, so the best place for that is to go on your Discord and uh, find the Expansion Mod Discord. Um, so this is the Expansion Mod Discord at the moment. If you scroll down um, and make yourself a uh, server hoster, you'll have access to this hosters hub. And in here you have the uh, AI share option, which is where everybody shares all their settings for the AI. And then the pin messages, you've got some really helpful places. And in this pin messages, there's a link which uh, Will Graydon's put up um, to a GitHub, which has lots of really helpful um, files on it. So what I suggest you do, uh, tell you what, in the description I'll put a link to this GitHub. I'll also put a link to this um, Discord um, so you can access both. So just to show you what the GitHub looks like. Um, here we are, and it gives you a nice little guide on how to uh, easily install it, um, and how to put it on your existing server, or how to put it on a brand new server. Um, and that's how I learned to do it, basically. And these are the files, so you click on this green bit that says code, and download the zip. And once you've downloaded the zip, it'll be on your downloads folder. You need to extract it, all you need to do is right click on that, Put, click extract all, go follow through the process, and you'll end up with a folder like this. And if you note, the files here are the same as the files here. So if anything changes, it'll give you an idea of when they changed. So something in this Daisy uh, server root folder changed seven hours ago. You can go in, you can see seven hours, nine hours, um, because there was an update today. And before today, you had to use um, some of the other expansion files for this mod to work. But now all you need is the expansion core mod and the expansion AI mod for this to work, which is brilliant. Saves a lot of um, re-uploading. Okay, let's get to it, shall we? So to start with, what you want to do is um, subscribe to the expansion ai mod so let's just do expansion ai daisy workshop in google workshop there we go first one that comes up click on that make sure you're logged in and click subscribe once you've done that it will uh, hopefully start downloading on steam it gives you a little small guide on how to install it here as well and it also gives you any idea of the change notes like you can see there was an update yesterday pretty late um, shows a few settings changed and uh, as I said before removed dependency on some of the other expansion mods which is great uh, one of the note one of the thing to note as well is that if you have the uh, expansion bundle installed you will still need to install the daisy expansion AI it's separate from the bundle um, okay, so yeah, once you've subscribed to that, you can close that for now. And then what you'll need to do is go to your workshop folder. If you don't know where your workshop folder is, you should probably look at my other video, which tells you how to uh, install Daisy mods from scratch because you will need that. So I've put a nice little link on my desktop workshop folder. Um, and you can scroll down, find the expansion, or Daisy expansion AI and the daisy expansion core. You will need those two mods uploaded to your server um, for this to work basically. So what you do is you open up your server and this is um, WinSCP, the client that I use to access all the servers that I host. Um, and all you do is you go to the root folder of your server, drag and drop the two that you need, or copy over, depending on which platform you have, but I drag and drop 
So drag and drop them over to here, and it'll take a little while to upload depending on your internet speed. And then what you need to do is copy across the keys. So inside each of these, there is an expansion key. Um, I think it's the same one for both of them. Yeah, so you only need to copy across one. So you copy it from here, right click, copy, to the keys folder in the root of your server. Copy into here. Well, you see I already have one there. Um, yeah. You will also need Community Framework, or CF, and Community Online Tools, and DAMPS Framework for this to work, I believe. So those three mods you can also find on the workshop easily enough, and um, they're nice and easy to install. I, uh, well, Community Online Tools is a bit more difficult, but I do have an, a video on my channel for that, and I will also put that in the description. Quite a few things to go in the description today. But yeah, all of these four mods need to be installed for that to work, basically. And uh, I suggest installing those three first, then installing that one and making sure it hasn't affected anything too badly, and then attempting to install that. Um, I'd say that's the best way to go about it. Uh, so once you're confident you have these four mods installed and working and your server runs fine, you can get on it then start going to install this one um, anyway that's my recommendation and uh, once you've dragged over the files you won't need the workshop folder anymore um, you know, if you run the server once after you've dragged and dropped that and put the keys in the keys folder you'll have a few files generate you'll probably have an expansion mod thing generate with a few bits and bobs in here settings and you might have something in the AI but if not don't worry about it this is what this bit here is for so let's just quickly go through this um, drag and go setup so this is for a brand new setup if you've um, kind of got a newish server and uh, you haven't installed the AI before so you should be able to basically drag and drop these files and it will generate um, generate all the paths and things that the AI need to go and walk around and so you can bump into them basically nice and easy setup so first step as I said before download zip extract it and then make sure you have all the files ready there we are I've got the files ready to go you will need these as I've already said start the server run the server one time generate the files needed and then shut it down before you edit anything um yeah okay i'll basically show you how to do this now instead of reading this so what we have in this folder is the mp missions and if you don't know how to find the mp missions folder it's just there in your server so mp missions mp missions generous plus so obviously this would change depending on what map you had. So if it was in the Mausk, it will be the Mausk. If it was in Banov, it will be Banov. It was, if it was in Essica, I think that's got a different name. But yeah, you get the idea. Chernos Plus. Oh, there you go. Look, you've got Enoch there as well. Chernos Plus. Um, and then what you want to do, if it's a brand new server, you can delete that and copy that over. So delete the init server copy that over if you have an existing server that already has some edits to this what you'll want to do is open it up and open up this one as well or oh, actually it might be here yeah if you have an existing server you follow this procedure here so the top of the file like you can see I've got here this will usually be empty you need to copy this code here outline all of that right click copy and then right at the top of your file should just be void main and you copy that into there and another thing you need to copy is initializing the patrols so you can either copy all of that it doesn't matter because that's commented out but I'd suggest just copying dynamic patrols copy 
and then so you've got this get game here and you've got one bracket two bracket three bracket and you put it underneath that just there look and you paste it in there that's very important you get it in the right place otherwise your server will not work for both of those and then you save it and close it and that is your initialization file sorted um, uh, the other thing we need to do is copy the AI folder with the init.eic. So you may just copy that whole folder into this directory, as you can see I have here. This is still in your uh, missions folder, in your Generous Plus folder. Just copy that whole thing across. And uh, yeah, that's all you need to do with that. You don't need to worry about that unless it gets updated. So if we go back in the folder files that you downloaded to the profiles folder. Now, depending on your type of server, depends on what your profiles folder is called. For Nitrado servers, it's called config. For a lot of other profile folders, it's just called profiles. Um, you should know this if you have been um, uh, modding already. So Nitrado, you'll generally have config. Um, for most others, it's called profiles. So you open up that and open up the one in the server. You'll have most more than likely already have an expansion mod folder if you've run the mod already. And open up expansion mod. You'll have AI. So what you want to do is copy across this AI folder into your expansion mod folder. So copy, paste. And then you'll get a folder like this. And inside this folder, you have loadouts and patrol settings, and we'll go through them in a bit. What you also need to do is go back here, and you also need to have this EAI folder. Um, I'm not sure if the server generates this or not, but if it doesn't, it still needs to go in your profiles or config folder, which are the same one depending on the type of server you have. Um, so just copy across this EAI folder into here and it should give you um, a settings folder, sorry, a settings JSON file for the AI and a master.c. Now in this, um, I've got a few other uh, loadouts in here, you don't need to worry about that. In the EAI settings.json, you want to go into that and what you will want to do is um, put your Steam profile, uh, sorry, your Steam ID into there. What that should allow you to do is access the um, admin panel spawn thingy for the uh, for the AI. Um, and now this has pretty buggy. There's been a lot of people that have had problems accessing this. Um, but hopefully that will get ironed out in a uh, future update. Uh, anyway, it's not the most essential thing um, to get these spawning anyway. Uh, the accuracy is quite an important factor in this. Um, so obviously it depends how much they're going to hit you or maybe even hit the infected because they do attack the infected as well, which is pretty cool. I'm just going to turn this up a bit because I think they're a bit pants at the moment. Try that. Um, okay, and that's all the files you need to copy over. Um, I believe, and it should be that you should be able to just start up the server, and it will generate some paths for the server that you're on. I think it covers four different maps at the moment. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Chernus, Banov, Namalsk, and uh, blah, 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 the other vanilla one, Enoch, whatever the uh, proper name for that is. They're the four that it auto generates paths for. And by paths, I mean when the AI are walking around the map they're patrolling, um, it's, it generates those patrol files. So if you go into the expansion mod, in your config folder or player profiles folder and then into AI you'll see the patrol settings it will generate 
some patrols for you. So yeah, what I suggest you do is make sure you run the server and make sure that you can find the AI. Um, uh, I'll show you that now actually. So start up the server, make sure it's loaded and working and that you can find it in the server browser. Uh, okay, so here we are in the server. Um, what you will want to do is activate your community online tools if you don't know how this works again as I said before I have a tutorial on how to use this um, or how to install it even and how to use this side panel um, we will be using ESP tools for this so this is a good way to find your AI and make sure they're working so what you want to do is do oh, I'm just get rid of that. I'm just what you will want to do is tick players because the AI accounted as players not player AI there's nothing in player AI at the moment so you want players um, extend the range to right 500 meters enable auto refresh I put it for every five seconds otherwise it gets really laggy and then click show ESP and oh look I see one over there already um, unless that's actually a player in which case I'm just going to kind of ignore it uh, what we will want to do is go on the map and I know for a fact that they spawn at the airfield so what you want to do is just put your player somewhere on the airfield preferably away from zombies and all the rest of that so you know they're not going to get hit by hit by yourself and then pop me just there if you double click on the map it teleports you which is a really good feature good job expansion Oh, sorry. Good job, um, Jacob. Um, and then the best thing to do is hit insert and use your Q button to go up in the air because this is spectator mode. And then look at the airfield, see if we've got anything spawning. Every little fly. Aha! So as I said before, you need to be at least 300 meters away for them to spawn. Where have we gone? There we are. So yeah, you need to be this far away from your own character or any other players for them to spawn. So here they are, running down the runway in their little patrol route, going for a little jog. Yours may look a little different to this. Uh, this is a one of the custom ones I set up and they've all got the same at the moment I might edit them a bit later but yeah they'll run down the runway get to a certain point cross it and turn around again and uh, it's kind of cool really so that's how you can tell if they're working um, okay let's just come out of this for a moment there you go look change route off they go I better log out because they're going to kill me Okay, so that's basically how you install them and get them up running just like that. They will they will spawn in, they will do their own thing and don't have to worry about it. If that's what you want, you can do that. Now, in this um, patrols folder, you can make your own um, patrols, which is pretty cool. So you can set exactly where um, you want the AI to spawn and where they want to walk to. Um, you can set what loadout they have and you can set exactly what clothes and things they wear. You can say how many of them you want to patrol on that particular area. Um, you can say what they want to do. So loop, if you've got a uh, an AI going from point one to point two to point three to point four, a loop will just mean that they go from point one point two to point three to point four and then do it again point one two three four one two three four whereas you can change that to reverse so if I scroll down to one that's got reverse on it there we go look what reverse will do will be I'll go to from point one to point two to point three to point four or however many points you have and then what they'll do I'll go backwards down it. I'll go three, two, one. 
So say if you have someone going around a corner, you go point from point one to point two to point three to point four. You want them to go backwards again, otherwise they'll try and say you've got a building there, they'll try and go through the building. So you want to go one, two, three, four. I go three, two, one. I hope that makes sense. Um, they're really the only two you need. There's also one that is halt, and that basically just spawns them in and they protect the area that they're facing, basically. Which is cool if you want them to be in a guard tower or something like that. But you need to have very precise coordinates for that. One way to get coordinates, um, or the X and uh, Z coordinates anyway, uh, are, is are the Eyes of Ive map, which is one of my favourites. So you can go on the map, they've got loads of different um, uh, loads of different maps for the maps. <laughs> loads of different missions for the maps, which is nice. So you can pick the one you want and you get some coordinates um, when you hover over. You see down here, look, it gives you the coordinates. All you've got to do is to copy them is to mouse over exactly where you want. So say if we go to the airfield and you want someone to walk from this end of the airfield down to the bottom of the airfield, put your mouse exactly where you want to spawn control C. You see it went white at the bottom there. I'll do that again. Watch the coordinates down here. Hover your mouse over it. Control C. Copy to clipboard. That's really handy. And then all you've got to do is paste them somewhere. So you've got the coordinates down here. Look, they've just pasted in there. I better delete them, otherwise I'll mess up the file. Um, yeah. And then what you do is you control C and then paste it again. And one more thing that would be worth mentioning is respawn time. That's in milliseconds how long it'll take them to respawn. So 600 milliseconds, I believe, is 10 minutes. You can do the math for yourself. Um, um, the minimum distance radius, that would mean that play all players, not just one player, all players have to be within sorry they have to be between 300 meters away from the spawn zone and um, within 1200 meters for the AI to spawn because you don't want to spawn too close to you so say if you spawn in the map and they spawn right next to you they just kill you instantly that's not a good thing but you also don't want them lagging up the server by being um, constantly spawned in so you can edit these but I find this is actually a, a pretty good um, pretty good uh, setup so uh, yeah that's what they do okay I'm gonna move file so that I don't mess up my my server um, effectively okay so here we are this is the same file and in here I'll show you how to set up a new patrol route so all I'm gonna do for now is copy this one so what I've highlighted there is one patrol route um, and in this patrol route it's in the west faction so there's different factions you can have and they'll attack each other and things which is kind of cool and there's civilian faction and uh, insurgent faction and an east faction this is the type of loadout that you'll have for it and if we go into loadouts in the server we have a soldier CDF loadout, which is this one here. Go into there, and here we go. This is the loadout that we have. We'll go into that in a minute. I'll carry on with this file for now. Number of AI. So this will spawn five AI, and they'll walk in a formation. I'm pretty sure it's an arrow formation. I could be wrong. I'm not a military expert. Loop. I've already gone over that, what that does. And speed, walk. So these particular AI will wander around. They will stroll about. Nobody gives any any business. Um, and at the moment, if they see you, they will walk towards you and shoot. I'm hoping in a future update it will change it so that if they see you, they'll kind of sprint interaction sort of thing. Be like, oh my god, an enemy, quick, run. Um, but yeah, for the moment, it, they will just walk. Unless you change that to jog. In which case they will jog around their patrol route and uh, when they see you they will jog towards you and try and shoot you or the or the even the infected and same goes for sprint 
And if you put sprint in there, they will be legging it around the map and you won't be able to really get away from them very easily. Um, so I suggest either having them on walk or jog for now. I'd say jog is a good um, in between, especially for military. Um, yeah. And this is the start position. This is where they will spawn in. This is this is the position they will spawn in. So um, anything you have here is kind of important to get them spawn in. And one thing which is a really good tip is always make sure your first waypoint is exactly the same coordinates as your start position. Because so your start position, if we think about the loops again, we have one, two, three, four, and that'll go round and round, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We will want the start position to be the same as the first waypoint. Otherwise, they'll start, I don't know, say miles away. They will then walk to their first waypoint and then go around it. I mean, that might be something that you want, but um, for most circumstances, say you have them walking here, let's use this map here as an example. Say you have them trying to walk around this airfield here. So they're going down the airfield, they go across here, and they go around here, and they go down here. So if you spawn them in there, and you don't add them as the first waypoint, so you, you say you have this here as the first waypoint, so that would effectively be two as the first waypoint, they would go spawn in, walk to number two, three, four, and then what would happen is because there's no first waypoint, they would run over to number two again. So they run across the airfield as opposed to going on the, in the uh, back to number one. So you need to have the start position, the coordinates, the same as the first waypoint coordinate. Otherwise, instead of being one, two, three, four, they'll just be two, three, four. And that isn't really what you want. Okay. Um, so let's try and make our own little custom one, shall we? This is one spawn region. And what you'll want to do is copy that. And you need to be very precise with this. And paste it just below where you've copied. And that will add in another um, identical spawn region because you just copied and pasted haven't you so what you want to do is choose your faction that and you get the spelling right for all of these whether that's east west insurgent or civilian and then you pick your loadout file um, I think civilian is a good one choose the AI choose the type of behavior they have uh, choose whether they're gonna walk and then your coordinates so let's do a really simple one shall we let's have them walk from let's have them just walk down this road of Kami and then walk back up this road that'd be a nice easy one so what you want to do is pick your start point so I'm going to pick a point to the east of Kami just somewhere around there copy that coordinate see so control C mouse over where you want and control C um, and then what I suggest you do is get up like notepad or something, an empty file, oh it's a bit big. And paste your coordinate in there instead of pasting it in your um instead of pasting it in your patrols file because it leaves a forward slash. And that can mess up your patrols file and stop them from spawning. And that's uh quite annoying to find. Uh, little mistakes like that. So what you want to do, that's your um, X coordinate and that's your Z coordinate. So your X coordinate is uh, this one, your Z coordinate is that one, I believe. Um, so you want to copy that into your start position. So that's where you want to start. Make sure you leave that comma on the end, otherwise that'll mess it up as well. And paste it in. Same with this one, copy that and paste that in to the bottom one and this one doesn't have a comma on it so like that 
Now this is your Y coordinate and it's a little more complicated on how to get your Y coordinate. Um, there's a few different ways to do it. One is Daisy Editor. Um, but the way I like to do it is using community online tools, which used earlier. So let's go back into the game. I should have left it open ready, but never mind. Okay, right, here we are again um, on the road to Kami. I'm just going to make my guy super duper invincible for now because I don't want him to die. And uh, what we will need to do is put in our coordinates. So go player management. Make sure that you are selected, and if there's anyone else in your server, it needs to be you that's selected, otherwise you'll end up teleporting other players around. Um, go to the coordinates that you need. So to, to do that just then, I'd hold, hold down Alt and push Tab, and it cycled through the windows that I had open. So what you'll want to do is go to that notepad where you copied the coordinates, copy your X coordinate, and get rid of the one that's in here, and then Copy your Z coordinate and put it in your Z coordinate. Control B. And then what you want to do is push teleport to coordinates. And that will take you to those specific coordinates. Um, now sometimes this puts you underneath the map and you fall. So make sure you have God mode on. But um, what you will have to do to get out then is change your Y coordinate to something higher basically. There we go, teleported us here. And to find out what the Y coordinate is for this exact position is you just untick that and tick that again or push refresh coordinates. Now you can see that this is the Y coordinate. All you've got to do really is put down 6 because that's close enough to 6 or 6.1 and that'll do. So go back to your... Bit where you pasted the coordinates in in here if we could type in six or six point one it's fine i might do six because it's close to six so six there we go um so that is your start position in here where you, where you are now this is your start position for your patrol route i'm just going to leave the game open for now um so what we have now is the first waypoint and what did I say earlier about the first waypoint it needs to be exactly the same as the start position so what do you do you just copy them over control C control V magic doesn't matter too much that they're out of line but if it annoys you just put them back again there you go uh, so that's our start position and our first waypoint done um, and for this we are only going to have two waypoints so I'm going to make sure that uh, the commas are in the right place so if you can see here if you've got one waypoint you have to put a comma for it to recognize that there's going to be another waypoint and then a comma for there to recognize there's going to be another waypoint a comma for to recognize there's going to be another waypoint and then when you finished you do not put a comma at the end there because otherwise that messes it up so uh, I'm only going to have two coordinates for this, so I'm going to delete these two. And then also what I've got to do is take away that comma, because that's the last coordinate. Boop. So let's set this second and final coordinate, shall we? So let's go back to our I survive map. So we started around here somewhere. We want to walk down here, um, say to the, just to the end of the houses, and then walk back again. So put your mouse over it. Copy the coordinates, control C, go to our notepad file, where we have the coordinates, paste them in there. So we have our X and Y coordinates. X is the top one, sorry, our X and Z coordinates. And Z is the bottom one. And you go back into your game to find your y coordinates it's a bit of a faff but it's a good way to do it oh sorry wrong one. go to player management click on your player and copy the whichever one doesn't matter let's do the x get rid of what's in there oh sounds like the zombies are 
button with the AI down there. And you want to copy your Z coordinate to there. And then teleport two coordinates. Bosh, one on the other side of the city. Now you refresh that. Now you can see that it's very similar to our other coordinate, which is nice and handy. So again, I'm just going to put in six. But sometimes, say if they're walking down a hill, that Y coordinate will change drastically. So for this, I'm just going to put in six again. Boop. And there we are. That is our waypoint done. And at the moment, there'll be military blokes running down the uh, spawn areas of the south. So that's probably not the best idea. So what you might want to do is change them to civilians. So what I'm going to do is just come out of the game. Stop my computer fan going bananas. Um, I'll just minimize that for the moment. And we've got our coordinates from there, so we don't need that anymore. So if I go back to the beginning of the server, the root of the server, we go config, we go in expansion mod, we go in AI, and we go in loadouts. So in here you can set up your own loadouts. Um, you may just have one in there at the moment that spawned in, um, or it may have auto-generated some other ones. But this is how you set up your own custom uh, loadout. So, as you can see, I've created police and thug and some other ones. So what you'll want to do is copy and paste um, one of these and change the name of it. So for this, let's just call it um, Simple Guy, or you can call it Civilian or whatever you want. There's already a civilian one there. So I'm just calling this a Simple Guy. Um, and open him up. So in here, let's go from the top. Chance to spawn one, because we want them to spawn every single time. Um, if you don't want to spawn every time you can change that so 0.5 for instance 50% chance for them to spawn so you can make keep your players guessing so um, this guy on his uh, his health will be default so they'll probably have 100% health and in his uh, inventory he will have on his body which is the name of the slot you'll have a rider's jacket and it'll be a black rider's jacket so this is the class name and you can find the class name in your types file um, so any clothing or anything like that that goes in the body slot um, will be in your types file time to find your types file, file by going in the mission folder the generous one and in DB and there's your types file so if we search for riders jacket we've got rider's jacket black there it is so that is the class name and you need that to be completely accurate capitals and all otherwise that won't work so you have that in there um, and the next section to that is the cargo so what's going to be in that rider's jacket Inventory attachments, inventory cargo. In that jacket will be a can of cola and a screwdriver. Um, and that's it, basically. So all of that there is for the body slot. Um, and all of... that there is for the jacket okay so jacket wise you have the class name as you can see here class name chance that it will spawn on him so it could have a 50% chance to spawn naked for instance um, and you have any attachments so if this was a gun for instance you'd put any attachments in there and it has the it, and it would have the same setup as this. I'll show you that in a second. 
um, and it's the same thing for legs and what's good about this particular one is it has a class name here and it has no cargo so it just cancels it completely and goes on to the next one and what they've done is they've put in a, another leg slot so they have a one in three chance of spawning each of these items because there's three of them so if you want your AI to spawn in with a kind of varied loadout, so um, different types of military gear or something, um, you put in this here. Well, actually, what you do is you put in this here, so that's one, and then you put a comma at the end of that, so to make sure that it knows that there's going to be another option. And here's the second option, which is the blue jeans. And here is the another comma, so, and here's the third option which is the dark blue jeans. There is no more comma. So that is the end of the legs. The end of the legs slot. So those three are the options for this particular guy. Um, now, health, what this means on the with the jeans is the quality of it. So it will it's it has a chance to be 70 up to 100% quality. So that's 100% will be pristine and 70, I think is like in a good condition sort of thing. Um, yeah, and again, if in these jeans, if you wanted them to, ha to have anything like um, with the jacket, uh, if you wanted them to have any cargo, you could put, um, copy this out, for instance. Sorry, copy, where are we? Copy this. I'll copy this and pop it into the cargo in there. That's where it would go. That's how you add items to particular um, bits of clothing or guns or whatever. Okay, feet. You've got some boots. It's the same deal. Exactly the same deal. Um, headgear, same thing. Gloves, hips. You can put belts on them. Um, so we actually have a hand slot as well. So what are they going to have in their hands? They're going to have a baseball bat in their hands. If we wanted to have a, a gun in their hands, for instance, um, what we would do is we would change baseball bat for the class name of a gun. So let's go to our types and search look for, uh, look for a gun. What gun should we have? Let's have a ooh, let's have a let's have a pistol shall we make it a bit different let's have a glock so a good way to make your way around these files is to use the find function hold down control and tap f and bring up find um, the direction is important so if it's on down you'll search down from where you are if it's up it'll search up from where you are so let's search for the the glock could not find Glock going downwards. So let's change it to up. There it is. Oh, there's the magazine for the Glock. We will need that in a minute. But first of all, Glock 19. That is the class name. So you highlight that, copy, and then highlight that and paste over it. So he will now spawn with a Glock in his hands instead of a baseball bat. Now, what do you think a Glock needs? Bullets. So let's give him some bullets, shall we? So what we want to do to that Glock is attach attach a magazine. And we just put a magazine in there. So what we will have to do with that is a very similar situation to what we've done with um, cargo for the other one. So. As you can see here, we have one of these. So, easiest thing to do, if you want to put anything in anything, you just copy that. Copy that, go down to where you want it. Um, where were we? Here we go, Glock. So, the attachment we want it to be is A Glock magazine. So we go into here as we tried to find before. Search Glock again. 
and we have a 15 round Glock mag or Mac mag underscore Glock underscore 15 rund. Put that in there. So now that gun, the Glock, will spawn with an attachment of a Glock mag, which is kind of handy. Um, and now you're thinking, ah, oh, but what if he runs out of ammo? What will happen? In his cargo, you might want to put another Glock mag. So what should we do? All you've got to do is in the inventory cargo bit, this is just generally what will spawn in his inventory in whatever slot is available. Copy that, boop, and paste that in there. Get your Glock mag and pop that. See so if we've got two apples there instead of one of the apples. Just like that. Now he's got a spare magazine, so he will reload his magazine once he's out of bullets. Now, what you might want to do to ensure that he actually has this magazine, there as well, look, change the chance to 1.0. That means he will definitely have the magazine. 1.0. Otherwise, like with this apple, it'll only have a 0.1% chance of spawning. If it's already on 1.0, then that's fine. He will definitely have a Glock mag in his gun. In his gun. Chance 100% or 1.0. And he will definitely have one now in his cargo as well, or in his backpack or wherever. Um, yeah, so that's very easy way of, uh, well not super easy, but relatively easy way of um, attaching stuff. Um, and there is also a melee slot or melee slot I believe. Um, let me just have a little look at one of the other files. This is new to me as well. Police loadout for example. What have they got? Feet, vest, headgear, gloves, hips, melee, there we go. So this will end up on their back and if they run out of ammo from the Glock that's in their hands, they will take out their stun button and buzz you around the face with it. Um, and that's slot name melee or melee, I don't even know how to say that word. If you're having problems with um, the patrols spawning naked, what you might have to do is copy your loadouts from your, so let me start from the server route, go into your config slash profiles folder, go into your expansion mod, your AI, and your loadouts. What you might have to do is copy the loadout that you made in here or was generated from here and put it into your EAI folder. As you can see, I have some in here as well, haven't I? Um, it's not always necessary, but sometimes something some things go wrong and I find it's easier just to have them in there. That way it's, you know, it won't go wrong. Now these, um, these mods are changing very regularly, so this video may go out of date very quickly. I don't know. Um, if it does, I'll do my best to put up a, um, a new one as quickly as possible showing the changes um, or put a warning over the video saying this has changed don't do this do that instead um, yeah um, but just just keep an eye out so it, it, it may go out of date but as of today this is an update last night and this is this is the most up-to-date one um, and that is how you set up your own patrols and coordinates and stuff um, For any further information, I suggest going to ask the um, expansion Discord. Again, as I said, I will put the link in the description of the video on how to get here. Um, they're constantly putting up really handy files and things, all this stuff. Um, and the, the, as this one was posted today really helpful information um, yeah I can't recommend this page enough for help with this particular mod if you have any problems you can find me at Septi Falcons discord um, I will also put a link to that in the description it's gonna be a big description and also put timestamps in the description so that you can find everything you need as well um, 
I hope this has been a good video. I will uh, think if there's anything else I can add to it that I've missed. Um, but yeah, for now, thanks for watching. And uh, contact me if you need any help. Bye.